I want to compliment my uh, colleague from Florida. He's addressed an issue which is an important part of this debate, and that is uh, making sure that uh, loans that get made in this country, uh, and both on the borrower side and the lender side, are responsible loans. And uh, I think that the, uh, the amendment that he will offer is, uh, is one that we ought to have a debate on and we ought to have a vote on. And I hope that this body will uh, act in a way that uh, leads to uh, more responsible practices and uh, more, a higher level of responsibility, uh, both with borrowers and lenders in this country, uh, which really was at the heart of why we ended up where, where we did. Now, it's interesting to me, Mr. President, that... Um, we continue to watch the problems in our, that, are, that we're experiencing in our economy. Probably by far the most important one is the high level of unemployment that has become sort of a chronic problem. And even though the economy appears to be recovering and growing uh, again, we still continue to see these uh, very high rates of unemployment, certainly uh, worse in some parts of the country than in others, but nonetheless uh, something that we cannot uh, tolerate and we ought to be attacking uh, every single day. Everything that we do here ought to be focused on what can we do to eliminate this high level of unemployment, to provide incentives for small businesses, to create jobs, to grow their businesses and expand, uh, get the economy going again. And, uh, and obviously, um, in my view at least, the small businesses in this country really are the economic engine of our economy. They are our job creators, and we ought to be focused on making it easier for them to create jobs rather than harder. And that's why I think it's ironic that almost everything that the Congress has been doing of late makes it even more difficult for small businesses to do that. Uh, we passed a big, massive uh, expansion of the health care uh, entitlement here in the Congress uh, a while back, and that's going to impose lots of new taxes, uh, lots of new mandates on small businesses, going to raise their insurance premiums, uh, which we're, we're seeing now more and more, the CMS actuary uh, with their recent report suggests what we suggested all along, and that is that this is going to drive the cost of insurance and health care up in this country. Not, it's not going to drive it down. It's going to drive it up. And I think so what you're going to see with uh, small businesses across this country is not only a higher tax burden associated with paying for that uh, and also many of the new mandates that are associated with it, but you're also going to see them having to deal now with the higher insurance costs that will be associated and come with this massive health care expansion that was passed, not to mention the fact that, in my view, this is going to end up in, in a tremendous amount uh, of uh, growth in the debt in the out years when we realize that uh, this thing is going to cost way more than it was anticipated and that many of the offsets or pay-fors uh, probably are not going to come to fruition. But that being said, it seems to me at least that um, having all this uncertainty coming out of Washington, whether it's a new implementation of the new health care bill, whether it's questions about a climate change bill that could impose a crushing new energy tax uh, on our economy in this country, questions about what's going to happen with tax rates with regard to dividends and capital gains and uh, marginal income tax rates next year, what's going to happen with the death tax, all this uncertainty that is just hanging a cloud over this economy and making it very, very difficult for our small businesses to do what they do best, and that is to, to exercise that entrepreneurial spirit, to, uh, to grow the economy, to create jobs. Very difficult to do that when you pile more and more burdens and more and more costs on top of the very small businesses that we're hoping will lead us out of this recession. And uh, that's why I think that uh, all of our efforts ought to have a, a very close eye on what impact they're going to have on the small business sector of our economy. And this is no exception. The debate on financial services reform, Mr. President, really is about some very critical issues, issues that need to be addressed, issues that we need, should be focused on, uh, how to deal with the issue of systemic risk and make sure that systemically risky uh, enterprises in this country, uh, that that risk is, is constrained, that there is appropriate oversight, there's appropriate transparency. Uh, I think that there's, a, there's an important issue to be debated here in terms of derivatives, which is a $600 trillion economy in this country that's been operating in the shadows. Uh, the legislation that's before us, I think if, if it's amended the right way, and I hope it will be here on the floor, will bring all that into the light. There will be transparency, something that I think is uh, desperately needed in that area, uh, hopefully done in a way that doesn't uh, impose new burdens on end users, those who are trying to legitimately hedge against higher commodity prices and currency rates and interest rates and those sorts of things. But there are things that need to be done in, in this legislation. 
to deal with the issue of systemic risk to ensure that we take all the steps that we possibly can to avoid and prevent the type of economic collapse and meltdown that we witnessed a couple of years ago. Now, I think it's ironic that this legislation does not encompass something that was at the very heart of that economic meltdown, and that is the issue of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Uh, ironic to me, at least, that uh, the focus of this, le this legislation is to deal with the issues that led to the economic uh, malaise that we found ourselves in and, and the, the, the collapse that we experienced here a couple of years ago that uh, would attempt to accomplish the objective of preventing that in the future absent dealing with Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, which were a huge contributing factor uh, to, uh, to what, we, what we witnessed here a couple of years ago. So it does not include that. It does get at derivatives. It does address in some fashion the issue uh, of too big to fail. And then it also dish addresses this issue that we are debating right now, which is the issue of consumer protection. And I would argue that this is an important part of the debate uh, when it comes to the regulation of our financial markets, uh, perhaps even the most important part, and that's protecting consumers. Now, uh, having said that, I think that the, what the recent financial crisis highlighted was the fact that there were a number of bad actors out there in the marketplace who were out for a quick profit uh, without concern for the consumer. And this uh, consumer protection effort here as part of this legislation is designed, I think, to, to correct that or at least address and get at that problem. Now, I strongly support uh, some of the consumer protection uh, ideas that have been put forward. There's a Republican alternative amendment that's been offered uh, to the base bill. But as is typically the case here in the Congress, instead of just dealing with the issue that needs to be fixed, trying to issue, fix the issue that needs to be fixed, uh, it seems like the pattern here is that we try to go, f go beyond that and fix issues that don't need to be fixed. And in fact, in, in, in this particular case, with a whole new bureaucracy, creating a whole new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, uh, manned with lots of new federal government employees, with lots of new powers, and, uh, in, and in my view, Mr. President, uh, extending a reach way beyond what should ever have been complicated or contemplated to deal with uh, the important issue of protecting consumers in this country. Now, why do I say that? I, I had in my office last week uh, a bunch of community bankers. I've, had, I've met with uh, credit unions. Uh, I've met with auto dealers. I've met with lots of small businesses. And uh, I would argue, Mr. President, that these are not the types of uh, entities that led to all the problems that we experienced. These are not systemically risky entities or companies. These are hard-working, in most cases, small businesses. When I sat down with my community bankers, I'm not talking about uh, big Wall Street banks. I'm talking about Main Street banks, local banks, banks that are about uh, their customer because they care about their customer, and they're, they're their neighbors. They're, they're the folks that they, uh, that they hang out with, their friends uh, and their kids go to school together. These are people who are far removed from Wall Street, and they told me about how this bill does not level the playing field and how they're going to be subject to a whole new layer of regulation that they cannot afford. They told me stories about you know, how they would uh, make sure that their customer is always satisfied and how they cannot afford to make bad loans. They, they, they're in these smaller banks and smaller communities where there's a tremendous amount of accountability. Uh, obviously, these are not the types of banks that I think this legislation uh, should be targeted or directed at. These are banks that provide capital to our farmers, our small business owners. In my state of South Dakota, uh, you know, these are, these are the people that um, most of my constituents would rather bank with than these big, you know, large chain banks that, uh, that we talk about when it comes to the issue of systemic risk. The Democrats' bill in its current form places new burdens on these banks, Mr. President, costly regulations on banks that are already heavily regulated and who all have already proved to be sound financial entities. I also recently sat down with some car dealers from my state. And again, uh, small Main Street businesses in South Dakota who have personal relationships with their customers. They told me how they may, may have to cut some of the services that they provide to their customers because of the broad authority that is granted to this brand new agency, this Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. These businesses take great pride, when I say these, the auto dealers, in the service that they provide to their friends and neighbors who come in to their businesses to buy a car and to have bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. looking over their shoulder does not seem like the right approach to me. 
Now, I've heard the arguments that the small banks are somehow not going to be affected because of the $10 billion ex exemption, but I think it's, it's important that we point out here and that we clear up some of the facts on this issue. That $10 billion exemption, Mr. President, is from Enforcement and Examination Authority by the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The new bureaucracy still has the ability to oversee every product and loan and transaction that these small banks enter into with their customers. I've also heard the argument that Section 1027 excludes many of the small businesses who are calling me and emailing me and coming to my office because they're concerned. However, it seems to me that once a small business decides to give their customers an option to pay for their goods or services over time, that this new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau can come knocking on their door. Now, what Washington bureaucrats are going to tell them is what's in the best interest of their customers in South Dakota. And so you can imagine, Mr. President, the implications of this type of authority. And currently, the legislation provides very few checks on this new uh, bureau's uh, broad new authorities. Now, I want reforms to our currently, current regulatory oversight structure, and, and we need better protections for our consumers. But the bill that is before us, Mr. President, creates a new bureaucracy that has a funding stream outside of congressional oversight with very few checks and balances, and that is not reform. Now, what I want to see is this, I'd like to see, is this bureau removed from the bill. Uh, there are other ways to provide better protection for consumers without burdening small businesses, which, as I said earlier, uh, are the engine of our economy. Now, just to, uh, to illustrate or to put a fine point on that, um, I have a letter here from the National Federation of Independent Business, which represents uh, businesses all across this country, has a very large membership, including uh, many businesses in my state, and they write to express their concerns with certain parts of the bill that are too far-reaching and would impose major new costs on small businesses. And they go on to say that the establishment of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau will cover many small businesses strictly because they set up flexible payment arrangements with their customers. According to a study that they did a few years back on getting paid, approximately 50% of small businesses offer special terms or credit-type arrangements to allow customers to pay for goods or services. And then they go on to describe the nature of some of those arrangements. But I think it's fair to say, uh, Mr. President, that a lot of small businesses, and car dealers are probably the most notable example of this, but as was said earlier, that could extend to uh, furniture stores, jewelries, jewelry stores, uh, that could extend um, uh, to, to orthodontists and dentists, people who allow their customers to spread out the payments over time, to pay on terms and have these flexible types of payment arrangements uh, would be covered by this. That makes no sense. At a time when we're trying to get our small businesses so that they can help lead us out of this uh, recession, start creating jobs, instead of dealing with the systemically risky entities that got us into this, this mess in the first place, we're talking about piling a whole new burden and lots of new costs on top of our small businesses at a time when they can least afford it. And so I would hope, uh, Mr. President, that the amendment that's being offered, the alternative to the, the Cons Consumer Protection Financial Bureau in this bill, um, will be adopted, that my colleagues here in the Senate will take steps to improve the way that, uh, that this bill treats uh, consumer protection and, uh, and the way that it treats small businesses under this bill. Uh, I frankly, as I said earlier, would like to see uh, this title removed entirely and us deal with this in a way that makes more sense, that doesn't create a whole new bureaucracy with all kinds of new government employees, with all kinds of new powers. There are certainly ways in which we can address the issue of consumer protection absent having to go to these great lengths and to this great cost expense to the taxpayer and, and great new burdens uh, imposed upon small businesses in this country. And so, Mr. President, I am one who will be uh, supporting uh, not only uh, the amendment that is before us, but other amendments that address this title in the bill. Uh, I have one that I'm working on uh, that would exempt many of the small businesses that would be covered by this bill, some of which I mentioned in my remarks earlier. But I think this is an issue that is, is just incredibly consequential in this legislation and so far removed, so far removed from the purpose of this bill in the first place. And as I said earlier, uh, we ought to fix the things that need to be fixed, but we shouldn't try and fix things that don't need to be fixed, particularly when it calls for creating a whole new government bureaucracy and, and new uh, government in Washington, D.C., new government employees uh, at great additional cost. And, of course, as I said earlier, 
at great additional uh, expense to America's small businesses, which are the economic engine and the job creators in our economy. Mr. President, I yield the floor.